Nerds and nerdettes and we the nerdlings all. It's your buddy Big John and G from Two Gun Pixie Presents Legendary Gaming and I'm back! What's up everyone? Hope you guys have been enjoying your week or weekend depending on when you're watching this video. I'm filming it right now on Sunday in March and uh, second Sunday in March and uh, so far things are going pretty good with me. Hope things are going pretty good with you. Alright, so I am going to make things better. They're going pretty good for me. I'm going to make them better. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to play Planet of the Apes by IDW Games. And this game is based on the original Charlton Heston movies. My personal favorite. When I say movies, there was five of them, but Charlton Heston was only in two of them. And the second one was basically a glorified cameo appearance. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. So we are going to learn how to play this game, this really odd game. Yeah. You know the movie Inside Out? All about the emotions inside the little girl's head? It's kind of like that. It's a one to four player game, cooperative game, fully cooperative game, and each player, in this case it'll be, it'll be me because after this I'm going to be filming a how-to play. I'm after this how-to play, I'm going to be filming, <laughs> I'm going to be filming a playthrough, is what I meant. Uh, but one to four players, and this game, each player is going to be playing a minimum of one. I'll be playing all four. Uh, one of the four aspects of Colonel George Taylor's psyche. Yeah, it's going to be real interesting. And they all got to work together to help him get through scenes. The actual scenes from the movie. So he can make it to the end. All right. I'm really curious. I have to see how this thing works. All right, so why don't you join me down the table, and we're going to check this thing out right now. All right, so uh, starting with components of the game, let's, let's start talking about the cards, because there's a few cards in the game. Now, there's different... Decks of cards for the different scenes that you're going to be progressing through through the movie. And each of them starts with an intro card. These intro cards will set up the scenes for the major scenes. And the minor scenes, they will be the entire scene. The actual encounter cards themselves will be under each of their appropriate intro cards. And they give you difficulties. Encounters that you're going to have to overcome in order to advance through the game. The game comes with four cardboard standees. Also, some copies of the game come with additional miniatures that you can use instead of the standees, and they're going to represent different movement and scoring throughout the game. The action cards are what you're going to be able to use in order to perform certain actions, and they're set up in different groups of sets, and they each have different abilities, that can be used during the game. Special cards grant you, well, special abilities. They're harder to come by in the game because they do do a lot cooler stuff for you, that's for sure. The Planet of the Ape cards, on the other hand, are usually not very friendly towards you. <laughs> and these cards happen every time a new day begins. Bunch of dice. Now, the dice are all numbered 1 through 6. There's nothing special about them, but they are colored differently because you, uh, if you're able to use white dice or gray dice, or the red dice, which act as wild. So there's a reason for that, and you'll see during the game. Now, the character cards themselves, there are four of them. There's the Clever Tailor, the Cynical Tailor, the uh, Defiant Tailor, and the Commander Tailor. And they have different aspects of his personality and his mind, uh, and they will grant you different abilities during the game based on, on their, their forte. If they do get defeated, uh, they are still in the game, but they have limited abilities. You just flip the cards. There's a day tracker token and a uh, first player activation token, just to show who the first player is. That'll get passed around. Skill tokens. The, this is your currency in the game. You're going to be spending them to use skills and the damage tokens to keep track of damage. In uh, everything but an easy game, uh, you're going to be able to take five damage before you're going to have to flip to defeated. 
And then, of course, the action card guide, as they call them, or as I like to call them, cheat sheets. And then there's the board itself. As you can see, it is there's a long board, and it keeps track of everything as you're going through the scenes by scene by scene, starting from the top, working your way down. And uh, that's the board and the components. So next, why don't we take a look and jump right to the uh, setup. That's what we want to do. Check, see how we're going to do the board setup. Now here's the actual board on the table. The cards are all in the appropriate spaces. The, there's a picture. There's a picture on each spot. So you know what to put there. Otherwise, you could just keep track numerically. Find the eight cards in their spot. You got the sun tracker because this is going to be going around and around and around and around. There we go. And every time it gets here, certain cards in effect that happen at sunrise will take effect. The aspects, the different aspects of Taylor, showing what you can spend one of those tokens for, the skill tokens, which is denoted by the I, and what normal ability is that they, that they have regularly. We have the miniatures set up. The gorilla. One of General Ursus's men. Actually, he was the second movie. Was it Orko in the first movie? There's the Statue of Liberty. There's Taylor. And there's the sinking ship. The sinking ship is going to be used to put down in front of each of the scenes so you know and you remember which scene that you're at. As it's progressing along, we got some dice. You set up the action card, the special cards. You're going to make sure they're shuffled. Of course, you're going to make sure all the cards are shuffled before you place them out. Now, the, the scene cards, they do have, if you notice, there's a different coloration here. See, the border for the rest of them is all white. Well, here it's green. They're inverted. And that's to show that, that this is the scene setup. This is the scene setup, like this one here. That tells you that Taylor starts on the 12 spot. The gorillas start on the 7 spot. I would have to move Taylor down one. Now, in each scene, these are going to... I might be getting ahead of myself here. I'm sorry. In each scene, is going to reset where the gorilla and where Taylor starts. However, the Statue of Liberty remains where it is and will continue down. Down, never resetting back. And if it gets down here, game over. You never want the Statue of Liberty down here. You always want to get here before the ape, and you never ever want to see the Statue of Liberty down here. And that's the board setup. So I got the tokens back here, all ready to go. And then I got some little props out. D&D miniature ape, part of the ape's TV show. Another miniature D&D ape, part of the ape's movie collection. I got Apey right here. Apey, say hello. Uh, he's just going ape that we're going to be playing this game. All right, so that is the way the board is going to look. They're set up. Let me see if I pull back a little bit. You get more of a better view. Now, I just have the tail of cards here because I am planning on doing a one-player run through it. And I just have them set up right here. Uh, because I think that might be a good place for the camera and to keep track of their skill cards, which I would just set off to the side of them so I could differentiate whose skill cards are who, because it actually takes an action to give a skill card to someone. But we'll get to actions uh, coming up. That's, uh, that's going to be the next segment coming up for the gameplay. So what do you say? You want to jump over to the gameplay section and see how this board all comes together. All right, let's do it. So things are broken down into three different phases for the game. And the first one is called the start scene phase. Now what this is, this means that wherever the scene is, wherever that the sinking ship is indicating, wherever you're at, 
that you're going to take the card and you're going to flip it over. Now, to start with, it's a minor scene. The game starts with the minor scene of the sinking ship. So you would turn this over. I don't want to give everything away, but it will tell you with the top that it is a minor scene, the number. It'll tell you what happens to the characters. It'll tell you what happens at the end, which almost always says to go to the next scene. In which case... This would be moved down to indicate the next scene. Now, I wanted to just go two scenes to explain this to you, to uh, show you that remember that there is the intro cards, which have inverted borders to the rest of the deck, as you can see. So you would turn this over, and this tells you, again, I don't want to give too much away on the card, this tells you at the top you see major scene, scene two, and it'll say 13 and 7 up at the top, and then it'll say times 3, showing this particular card, times three. So you're going to take this down, you're going to put it into the active scene slot. Over here, Taylor starts on 13, so he is not going to move. The gorilla, it says, starts at seven. So for this scene, you would take him and you would start him, boom, right down there in scene seven. And then it would say, it said to draw three cards. So you're going to take three cards. I don't want to give too much away. I don't want to spoil the cards, so I am not going to be flipping them over. I will have to use one as an example later when I get to the card resolution part of the how-to play video. But for right now, this is what you're going to do. You're going to place them down. They're going to be, they're going to be right side up. Like I said, I don't want to spoil too much of the game. So they're going to be sitting like this, and you are going to be working through the encounters on the cards during your turn, and you are trying for each encounter you are trying to get down here first. You don't want the ape to get down there. That's bad. And you definitely, as I said earlier, do not want the Statue of Liberty to get down here. Because again, as I mentioned earlier, each scene, you and the ape figure will reset to whatever spot it tells you you are going to be on. In this case, 13 and 7 for the ape. However... At the end of the scene, wherever the Statue of Liberty is, she is going to stay there. Through the next scene and the scene after that, she will continue staying wherever she is, slowly inching her way forward. And if she gets here first, that's the end of the game. So you never, 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 never want to see that Statue of Liberty getting down there. So that is the start scene phase of the game now the next the next uh, is the action phase i almost said scene i had to correct myself so the next is the action phase of the game now there are three actions that each player is going to be able to take during the course of the game now you can uh take several different actions and you don't have to take them in any order and you can repeat them yeah, so if you want to, you can take the Contemplate three times. Because each time you take it, you can give one action card to another one of Taylor's aspects, another character, another player of the game. So that's just one of the things you can do. Uh, action cards themselves, you can spend an action to draw an action card. Now these action cards over here, you see there's one deck of action cards and there's two spots available. That's right, there's always going to be two known cards available. And you are always going to have, I didn't really shuffle this. Whoops. I didn't shuffle this, so pardon me. Let's see, get one maybe from the middle somewhere. To show you a difference. So you are always going to have two cards out. If you draw one of them, if you choose one of the two showing cards, you are, there we go, sorry. <laughs> if you draw one of the two showing cards, you are immediately going to place it for, uh, with one from the top. Uh, but if you do not want to take one of these, you can blindly take from the top. And see what you get. Like I said, I did not shuffle this yet. So that's why those are all coming up. Taylor cards. Now, if you want to, you can also spend an action. Sorry, let me come back over. You can also spend an action if you want to. Yeah, to reset. So these would go into a discard. And then you would reset by pulling out another two. Which, let's guess, they're both going to be Taylor. <laughs> Now, another thing you can use one of your actions for is to do one of the active encounters. 
there will always be three encounters out, unless, of course, you run out of encounters. And, of course, you have less than three. <laughs> but you're going to uh, use an action point uh, to be able to do these encounters, and therefore advance along this point bridge, down, 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 to get to zero, as I said earlier, for what? To win the scene. Now, you can also use an action point to, as I, uh, well, actually, the thing I, I opened up with, they call it contemplate, is what they call it. You can spend an action to give one of your cards to another one of the players. Now, there's also two different ways, two different, two different ways that you can heal in the game, and both of them are also actions. One of them, you can heal one point of action, uh, one point of damage, uh, by taking the minor healing action. And the way you do that is you are going, we're gonna need this actually, you are going to discard. Oh, that wasn't a tailor. <laughs> All right, you are, go that wasn't a tailor either. Where is my tailor? Now, of course, I can't find a tailor card. Ah, come here. I know there's one right over here. Help me. Ah, I can't get it. Aha, here we go, Taylor. This is what happens when you don't have nails. All right, so finally, three Taylors. And the reason I wanted three Taylors is because if you have three of a matching kind, and the kind is the figure that is on it, it is not the description on the bottoms. So if you have three of these matching cards, you can heal one damage to yourself. And if you are lucky enough to actually, where is it? Come here. Oh, you little stinker. If you actually have, and I have another one right here. If you have four, ha-ha. If you have four, then you will be able to heal three damage by using those four cards. Now, you can use that as an action for minor or an action for major, depending if you have a set of three or a set of four, and depending on how much you need to heal. Now, the, the last thing that you can spend an action point on is called allies. Of course, I need to go through the cards again. Just, oh, here we go. Here we go. Boom. Cornelius and Zira. And there is also, oh, look how lucky I am this time. And there's another one. There is also another card. Nova. These are ally cards. And if you play four of these cards, uh, uh, oh, uh, I'm sorry, if you play... Uh, four of these cards in any order. It doesn't have to be four Novas. It doesn't have to be four of the Cornelius and Zeros. Any combination of them. Then you will actually be able to take this big gorilla, and I mean that literally as well as figuratively, and you can move him back a space. Just one. Don't get excited, John. There we go. And you can move him back a space. That's what you can do with your allies. So it's going to take four cards of any combination of Cornelia Zira or the Nova card, and you're going to be able to do that. Now, there's also there's also free actions. Now, unlike the regular spending actions that you only have three of a turn, for your free actions, you are able to take as many as, well, you want, or more accurately, as many as you are able to take. And the reason I phrase it like that is because that also has to do with spending sets of cards. <clears throat> Pardon me. If you spend a set of three matching cards, you can use that to gain one red die. One red die is important because it can act as a white or a gray die when you are needing to make a certain number on a specific color die. Also, if you spend through a matching set of three action cards, you will be able to grab yourself a skill token. Like I said, that is currency in the game. You are going to be needing that in order to perform, well, skills. <laughs> and the last thing you can do is if you have a matching set of four cards, you can spend those and you can gain one of these special cards. Such as another day, play after a Planet of the Apes card is drawn, discard it without effect, and draw a replacement. Then resolve the newly drawn card instead. Yeah, and you see even image has the symbols right here. Right there. So uh, and the special cards are all really, really cool. They are more beneficial than the normal action cards. So that is the... Uh, that, well, that is what you're doing in the actual game 
play as far as it goes uh, step by step. You're going to be using your actions. You have three actions, as I said, so you choose one of those three, two of those three, three of those three, and whatever amount of free actions you take, you are going to resolve the cards, you are going to gain the cards, you are going to gain skill, you are possibly going to move forward to the track, helping to end a scene. And then when your turn is over, you are going to pass the active player token to the next player, and it is all going to happen again. And again, and again, and again, until you finally get down to the discovery scene. And when you get down to the discovery scene, you're going to play through an event, and hopefully, and it's going to be a tough one, and hopefully, everything is going to work out, because otherwise, the apes will win. You don't want the apes to win, you know what they say, the only good human is a dead human. And you don't want people like that running the place. But from here, what I want to do now is I want to take a deeper look at the actual encounter resolve step um, in the game phase. I want to take a look at that because uh, when you don't know the symbologies on the cards, at first look, it can look like a little bit of a mess. And it's not. So let me just show you how that's going to play out. So I don't really want to give away too many spoilers on the cards and the events and the stories as they unfold, but I am going to use this one example from scene two, the Forbidden Zone, which is the first major scene of the game, and I'm going to be uh, just randomly taking this card right here, and, uh, well, I, ran <laughs> I mean, I randomly took it, and uh, off the top, to not give anything away, and we are going to examine this card, and I'm going to show you what this means. So, forgetting the past. So you have a little dialogue there. We have the here and now. Get that, and hold on to it, or we'll be dead. We have the here and now. Get that, hold on to it, or we'll be dead. These are lines from the movie. Art is fairly good, but anyway, the card itself... So now if you look up at the top over here, you're going to see that says three. You're going to get three white dice. Three white dice for this encounter. These over here symbolize that you are only able to use a Taylor card, a Dodge and Landon card, or a Dr. Zayas, uh, Zayas card. I always do that. I always have to correct myself on his name. Anyway, it's like the song, Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas, rock me, Dr. Zayas. Uh, those are the only cards that you will be able to use to help you, and you are going to get two rolls to attempt to meet your goal. The goal here is three white dice showing five or higher. Each die has to be a five or a six in order for you to pass. You have five, uh, you have two rolls to make those, uh, five or higher's, and you don't have to roll all of the dice when you, uh, when you take your second reroll. You, you can only choose to roll the ones that you need. Now, if you succeed, which is the green check mark, or if you fail, which is the red X, if you succeed, the ape is going to move one forward. That's not great. But you're going to get to move forward too. Not bad. Also, as you tell right down here by the little arrow pointing down the extra stuff, for every player in the game, if there is that many number of gorilla cards discarded from the player hands, then you're going to be able to move the Statue of Liberty statue, the Statue of Liberty statue. Yeah, I heard it. Uh, you're going to move that back on the track away from the zeros. So you're going to be moving that back up along the track, getting it as far away from zero as you can. Well, in this case, only one, but every time you get an ability to do this, Focus, there we go. Every time you get the ability to do this, trust me, you are going to want to do this. So for this, now don't forget, uh, everyone in the game, each of the characters is going to start with two skills, and they're also going to be starting with one special card. Now, I'm going to uh, assume that everyone from a previous encounter has at least one action card, but that's not always the case. So if you look here, we have... Cornelius and Zira, we have Nova, we have Nova, and we have a Dr. Zaius. Now, Dr. Zaius is one of the cards that you are allowed to use to help you in this endeavor. 
So looking at Dr. Zayas, he is going to give one white die. So you discard this card, you grab your extra white die, and now you have four dice that you are going to try to need to make five or better on. So you're going to take the dice. Since you really have nothing else, you can't use Nova Nova or Cornelius and Zero. Now, let's see. We do have action cards. During any encounter, raise or lower the value of any one die by one. For the survival training, Bright Eyes... Play at the start of any character's turn. All Taylor action cards are wild for the duration of this turn. Oh, interesting. And astronaut training. Play at the start of your encounter. Gain two red dice. Red dice are wild dice. They count as white or gray, however you need them to. So, let's see what happens. So, if I roll the dice right here. Boom! Look at that. Not bad to start with. I got two of the four dice. Already five or better. This is not going to help me. See, now, if it had been four, if one of these two dice would be four, that would be great. But I do get a second roll. I will choose to roll these two, obviously. I got it. There we go. So now that would have passed, because that is enough. Now, if that, had, that six had come up a four... Then I could have used my survival training, to, which says play during any encounter. This is an encounter. Raise or lower the value of any one die by one. Why would you lower it? Because not all of the encounters are a number or higher. Some of them will just have that die on it without the plus sign, which means you have to get that number specifically. Exactly. If that had been a five, five plus five plus, instead of all three five pluses, then one of these would have to have been exactly a five. But that is how you get through the encounter scenes. Uh, so then you go through and you're going to get your rewards. So in this case, this encounter scene started with him on third, Taylor on 13 and the gorilla on seven. So the gorilla would move forward to six and your Taylor would move forward two spaces. So he's catching up. That's the way that would run. So that is the way you resolve the encounter cards in this game. Really, really simple. Fast forward. Just looking at the iconography, you're going to know exactly what you need to do, and you're going to know exactly what's going to happen if you pass or fail. So now that you know that, we're going to jump into the discovery scene. I have that separate, just like on the board, as you can see, it is separate from the other encounters. So we're going to jump and we're going to discuss that as well as the winning and losing conditions of the game. That's what we're going to next. <laughs> There are three, count them, three variations that are included in the rulebook for this game. The solo or solitaire rules, the easy game, and the hard game. If you're playing a solitary game, then everything I said still stands. All the rules are the same with two small exceptions. If we remember the example card I used before, the bonus was that if... Uh, if the group discarded a grand total of one gorilla card per player in the group, that they were able to move the Statue of Liberty stand back one space. Well, one of the differences is when you were playing a solitary game, if you have any, any, any encounter, any card that says that you can discard sets, but it does not, it does not specify group, then whatever that number is, is one less to a minimum of at least one card for you. So if it was a set of three, you would only have to discard a set of two. If it was a set of two, then just one, and it can never go lower than one. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is health. Now, this comes into play if you are going to go crazy. What I mean by that is in a solitary game, you can play one, two, three, or all four aspects of Taylor's Psyche all at once. The more you use... The more regular, I was going to say easy, but, but honestly, the more regular the game is going to be. If you really want to go hog crazy and you want to just decide to use one aspect of Taylor. Well, first of all, good luck to you, sir or ma'am or 
it's or whatever or whatever i just mean good luck because that is going to be a crazy hard game and in fact because it is so crazy hard instead of five damages each your aspect can take seven damage i would not suggest this as the first second or maybe even third time the game is played you're going to want a couple of games under your belt a couple of successful games under your belt before you're going to try something like this using one aspect it's a little crazy but you can do it for a solo game now other than a solo game if you just want a variation to make this game itself a little easier because as i said a lot of these scenes are not very easy to get through at all is the first thing that I suggest is that you do not have to resolve the discovery card. Uh, just make it to scene eight, and you win. No final event, no nothing to, to resolve. That sounds a little wimpy if you ask me. It also suggests that each player gets an extra action, a fourth action instead of three actions per turn. And you can also start the ape figure one space further back. So the first encounter said for him to start at seven. If you're playing the easy mode, you would start him at eight instead. There's also the harder version of the game. If you so wish, you get used to this. And the game starts to become a little too easy for you. Then you can try to up your ante a bit. First of all, say goodbye to five bangs before you're defeated. That's only be four. You can take four hits per character. Each character, that is, can take four hits before they get flipped to defeated. Also, as each setup tells you, to start them off, again, using the base example of starting the ape off over here on seven, if you want to play hard, then they're going to always be two spaces closer to zero. When you're starting this game. Yeah, that trust me, that itself is enough to make the game harder. But it also suggests that you start the game with just one skill token each. Not two. And finally, that you would start the game without each player having a special card. And trust me, that all will make this game that much harder. And this game is not easy to begin with. So that's the overview of the game. That's the overview of the variations. There we go. Well, actually, the last thing I just wanted to point out is the is the iconography, uh, the symbol. Uh, symbols in the game now there is no card although we do have we do have a two-sided card to explain the actions and the steps and everything which is very helpful very handy each player can get one of these two sideds there is no card that shows what the symbols mean and at first that bothered me why why you know they have everything else why not that but you know what these symbols became very intuitive very quickly. You're not going to need to reference a card. I swear, after reading what this symbol means once, once you read that, you're going to know what it is. Because the symbols are very, very straightforward. Forward that many number, backwards that many number, to the corresponding standee or miniature that you're using. Damage, heal, group damage. Ugh, advance the day track. Don't not advance the day track. Ha ha. Gain a skill, gain an action card, gain a special card. Multipliers, it just means that the number on it tells you the number that you would be getting or losing. Uh, of that specific item. Slash means or. It doesn't mean both. And finally, game over. You all lose. It's very, very simple. You don't need a card. I can totally see why IDW Games did not bother with the print cost of that. Although it wouldn't have been much. I can't imagine printing up one more card for this would have been, you know, would have broken the bank. 
But again, like I said, honestly, they don't need it. All right, nerds and nerdettes and we little nerdlings all. That was how you play Planet of the Apes by IDW Games. As you can see, the game was is really simple. It doesn't have a, a, a lot of fidgety rules to it whatsoever. It's all very straightforward. Each player in their turn, they can take some actions. They can take some free actions. They resolve encounters. They check for end game, uh, win, lose results. They move the day tracker. They play a Planet of the Apes card. And uh, next player goes. That is how easy this game is. But this game is not about easy or about hard. This game is really about teamwork. If you don't like cooperative games, I don't know what I can tell you to get you to play this unless you happen to be a huge Planet of the Apes fan also and you're going to give and you're just going to, you know, give up the whole fact that you don't like cooperative games just so you can have an awesome Planet of the Apes game. But if you don't mind cooperative games or even better yet if you love cooperative games, this one is really really good in that respect. And the gameplay, the turn situation, everything feeds into the cooperative feel of this game. So that's how you play the game. It's that simple. And I can't wait to try this solo. I don't know if I'm going to have enough time today. And even if I do, I don't have, I'm not going to have enough time editing this and editing the playthrough today. So, man, the earliest you're going to see a playthrough is tomorrow, Monday. So, <laughs> either way, we'll see. So don't forget, I'm your buddy Big Johnny G. For Two Gun Fixing Presents Legendary Gaming, we are here on YouTube. Thank you for subscribing to us. Thank you for liking us. Thank you for sharing our videos. That is so cool. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram a little bit. And we have a Zazzle store. Two Gun Fixing Zazzle store. We're all over the place. So keep coming back. Keep commenting. And we'll keep talking to you. And we'll keep answering you. All right, everyone. What was this? This was how to play. <laughs> <laughs>